Internet, Wagwan. I'm Kyle, a Linode developer advocate. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Drupal 9 using Linode's one-click app system. I'll also show you how to configure your DNS settings to point to your new Drupal 9 site. As an added bonus, we'll cover getting SSL set up using CertBot and how to secure your Drupal configuration by modifying file and directory permissions. So let's get to it. first thing you want to do is get your domain to point to the node's name servers. The way in which to do that is to first determine whichever registrar you used to purchase your domain, log into that account, and update your name servers that you use on that account to point directly to the node's name servers. A general guide on how to do that can be found in the description below at linode.com slash docs slash guides slash DNS dash manager. For specific instructions on how to do this using your registrar, please see their respective documentation on their website. Log into the Linode Cloud Manager and head over to the App Marketplace down here on the left. The select app list will populate with all the apps available and you would just want to find Drupal. It's right here in column 3. Select Drupal Latest and before you click Create Linode, scroll down to a little bit closer to the bottom of the page, you're going to see Drupal latest options. Here's where you want to add your root password and your user password. Ensure that these two passwords are unique from each other for security reasons. The default image is Debian 10. This will be the OS running on your cloud instance. And then for your region, you want to ensure that it's something closer to either you or to the clients you'll be serving. Um, I am currently on the west coast of the U.S., so I'm going to select uh, Fremont. As far as the Linode plan is concerned, 4 gigs of RAM and 2 CPUs and 80 gigs of storage should be more than enough for our purposes. The default label should be fine, and you may add tags to this Linode if you wish, but I'm going to leave this blank. Down here, we're going to add a root password for SSH. This way we can access this Linode from our terminal. And if you have a public SSH key, you'd add it here. If you don't, don't worry about it. For this setup, we won't be attaching any virtual LANs. And if you so wish, I do recommend it. Adding on some backups would be very beneficial depending on the complexity of your Drupal website or Drupal web application. Once you're ready, you hit create Linode and let it do its thing. Provisioning can take anywhere between two to five minutes to complete. All right, and just like that, in under two minutes, my Linode's up and running. Now, the idea is to get domain set up. So we're gonna grab the IP address from here, head over to the nav bar on the left and click domains. And then you can select create domain. Now from here, you would type in your domain address, the email you use to register that domain, and then where it says insert default records, you could actually select insert default records from one of my Linodes from here, and then select the Linode that you have set up, and then create the domain from that. Alternatively, you can manually get your domain set up. So we're gonna select linodians.net here, and then we're just going to scroll down to the A records right here, and we're going to add an A record. So for the host name, we're actually going to use the root for the host name, meaning the top level domain. So linodians.net. If this was a subdomain, we'd probably start it off with something like drupal.linodians.net. But in this case, we can just use the at symbol, and it automatically targets the top level domain, as you can see here, linodians.net. And then we're just going to paste that IP address that we copied from our Linode. And we're going to leave the TTL as default and then just hit save. Provided that your registrar has had about 24 hours to get your domain information updated across the web, this should be ready to go. But if you've just gotten your registrar to point over to the Linode name servers, it might take 24 hours. So give it some time. For the sake of covering all your bases, let's also grab the IPv6 IP address and throw that in uh, to the A record here as well. 
We're going to head back over to our Linodes. We're going to click on Drupal Latest US West or whatever the name of your Linode is. And then we're just going to grab this IPv6 address right here. And then we're going to head right back to domains, select our domain, scroll down to the A record, and we're going to add it in right here. Same process, add symbol for the top level domain, paste in the IP address, hit save. Now all your bases are covered as far as IP addresses are concerned. All right, let's see if we can access the website now using the IP address provided and if we can also access the website using the domain that we've just created. So let's copy this IP address and paste it into the browser here. And voila, we are here on our Drupal version 9.2.8 instance. And this is the installation setup for Drupal 9. Let's also see if we can access the site via linodians.net, the domain that we have set up. So linodians.net. Ah, we're also able to access it here. Now, again, please bear in mind that this is all entirely based on you when you got your domain names or your name servers uh, set up with Linode. This may take up to 24 hours, depending on your registrar. So keep that in mind and you know be patient. All right, so let's go through the installation process. All right, so the first thing you want to do is select your language. I'm going to select English and click Save and Continue. Then you have your installation profiles. You can use the standard profile, which is the default Drupal setup that has all of its commonly used features pre-configured. There is the minimal setup that basically gives you a bare bones version of Drupal. And if you're an advanced user, you can build on top of that as you see fit. And lastly, you have the demo umami food magazine and this is basically to showcase what drupal is capable of it'll have a theme and images etc basically to show what drupal can do to a potential client or someone that you want to show off to in this particular instance we are going to use the standard setup because that's usually what people are going to run with now from here we're going to configure our database the database name is going to be Drupal DB. The username is going to just be Drupal. And the password is going to be the one that we set up when we were setting up the Linode. And now Drupal's being installed. All right, and our installation is complete. For more information on the installation process and just getting Drupal set up with Linode entirely, check out linode.com slash docs slash guides slash Drupal dash marketplace dash app. A link will be in the description below. All right, so let's get the site set up. So from here, you're going to set up your site name, your site email address, username for the account, etc. Before we jump into that, though, I want you to make a very, very important note of this above. All necessary changes to sites slash default and sites slash default slash settings.php have been made. So you should remove write permissions to them now in order to avoid security risks. If you're unsure how to do so, consult the online handbook. I do recommend using the online handbook for more information on this, but I will show you via SSH how we can actually change settings.php and the default directory as well um, to no longer have write permissions. So first things first, let's get the site name set up. We're going to call it Drupal and node site email address for right now. For these purposes, we're going to use a non email address for the site maintenance account. Um, you can think of this as your administrative account. Drupal comes with a root account called user one, but this is your administrative account um, when you're getting a site set up. So we're going to just call this one. I'll call it uh, Linodemin, just because I'm creative. <laughs> and then the password will make it something simple. And then for the regional settings, the uh, also the email address down here was automatically populated by the site email address. You can change this if need be. But what I'm going to do is actually change the default country under regional settings to United States.
And then the default time zone is LA. Check for updates automatically, and we're gonna uncheck receive email notifications just for these purposes. Hit save and continue. And here you are at your very first Drupal website. This is the default theme for Drupal. It's called Bartik. And you can change this however you feel like. There's not much to do right now uh, as far as the site itself. You can configure it as you like. Good example, going under appearance. As you can see, Bartik is the default. You can switch it to seven or Olivero or Stark, however you feel. But we're gonna leave it as the default for right now. All right, so we wanna access our virtual host using Linode shell next. Instead of using SSH on our terminal on our own machine, we'll be using Linode's web-based shell. So let's hop over back to the Linode site. And then what we're gonna do is select our Linode and then up at the top right here, you're gonna select Launch Lish Console. And Lish is Linode Shell. Very cool, all right. So now you're gonna log in using the credentials you created at the start of this tutorial. And for me, that's going to be root, and then the password. All right, and here we are. So now that we've logged in, what we want to do is ensure that Apache is configured with the correct domain in our vhost file. So let's get started on that immediately by using, I like to use Vim. You can use any text editor you prefer. So we're going to use Vim etc Apache 2 sites enabled and the default I think should be drupal.conf and there it is. So we're going to hop in here. All right, and here you will see your server name. Now this is not the domain that we set up, right? This is the IP address, which is correct, but we want the domain name itself. So what we're gonna do in this instance is comment this out. And then what we're gonna do is just add in a new server name. And this new server name will be the domain that you are currently using. In my instance, it's gonna be linodians.net. After that, we write quit. All right, and then what you wanna do is restart Apache. So you'll run system control, restart Apache 2. And there you are. Now Apache 2 knows to use the domain that you've set, and in this instance, linodians.net, um, to point to this website. As you can see here, the directory is indicated. So when you go to linodians.net or whatever your particular domain is, it'll point directly to this directory. All right, so next up is getting SSL set up with CertBot. And the way in which to do this is to run apt install certbot python dash certbot dash apache and let that install you're going to hit yes on the prompt so that the installation can commence all right and then once that's completed you want to run certbot so we're going to run certbot dash dash apache oh <laughs> i wrote cert bit All right, so here it's prompting me for the email address used for renewal. I'm just gonna use the default email address I used when I was setting up the site. So make sure you use an email address that you have access to when you perform this. And now from here, just follow all the prompts that come up during the installation. I agree. No. All right, so this is important. Which names would you like to activate HTTPS for? So you have all the domains listed. It's essentially the virtual host files that are detected or the virtual hosts that have been detected by Apache 2. CertBot is checking that and then giving you those 
particular domains, you have to select which ones you want to activate HTTPS for. In this instance, I'm just going to use the Linodians.net one, since that's the one that I set up, and I'm going to select two. If you need to do this across multiple domains, follow the prompt where it indicates that you should select the appropriate numbers separated by commas and or spaces, and then leave the input blank to select all options if you want all your domains to receive HTTPS. So I'm going to select two, hit enter. Now this new prompt that's come up is asking whether or not I want all HTTP traffic to be redirected to HTTPS and remove HTTP access altogether. Personally, I do. So I'm going to actually select two to ensure that the redirect does happen all the time and ensure that HTTPS is always used. And there you are, all done. SSL is set up now on your new Drupal site. Let's try and access Linodians.net via HTTPS. So if we go HTTPS colon slash slash Linodians.net, we are secure. All right, cool. However, if we were to just go to Linodians.net, you'll see that we're still getting HTTP. Drupal is a little funny about this. There's documentation provided on drupal.org that explains how to configure your Drupal setup to ensure that HTTPS is always redirected to and HTTP is never used. If you want to force HTTPS on your website across the domain entirely, there is a module available from Drupal that you can use. It's called HTTPS and WWW redirect. You install this module, enable it, and then set your domain up and you will always have HTTPS forced on your site. Alternatively, you can manually get this set up as well, but this is the easy method. And that about covers it. I hope that all that was clear. Uh, right now, if you check in the description box below, there is a $100 60 day credit being offered by Linode to be used on Linode.com, as well as the links to all of the different docs that we mentioned in the video here today. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, share the video if it was helpful, and let us know what you'd like to see next. We'd like to be able to provide you with more information that can help you along your way using Linode. With all that being said, this has been Kyle, and thanks for checking in. Peace.